Today I'll be talking about uh, speed logs that are used on the ship and specifically I'll be talking about electromagnetic logs. Uh, then in a separate video I'll talk about Doppler logs and I'll provide you with a link on that video as well. So this video will focus on the speed and distance logs used on board the ships to measure speed and distance traveled and specifically I will focus on the electromagnetic logs also called as EM logs. Alright, uh, so before I go into that, let me just discuss briefly a uh, history of how the ship's uh, log has evolved over time. And I just wanted to show you the old system of measuring speed and distance on the ship. Uh, this was the old French ship log, which was uh, the first practical log that was developed about at 1600. It consisted of a pie-shaped log chip. As you can see in the picture and the log chip had a lead weight on its curved edge that caused it to float upright and resist towing so when the log was tossed overboard it remained more or less stationary while an attached line that you can see here in the picture as well marked off with equally spaced knots was let out behind the vessel for a measured interval of time it was measured with a sand glass that also you can see in the picture here the line and the log were then hauled aboard and the speed of the ship was determined by dividing the length of the line by the time interval. And now you also have to remember that we are talking about those days when the ship's speed was much slower than what it is today. Alright, so those days the ships were much slower so it was easy to do this practice. Now of course over time it was not easy to continue with this system. And then there was a modern toward log and this was discovered. 19th century and the log chip uh, was replaced by this log here it's also known as sometimes a towed rotor or a propeller uh, connected by a line to an automatic speed and distance measuring equipment that you can see here in the picture so the, the this log kind of log used a pitot tube that you can see in the picture it's a, it is a pitot tube because it was named after I think Henry Pitot who invented it and it, this projected through the bottom of the ship. The tube has only one forward facing and two side facing orifices or holes. Now when the ship was moving, the pressure in the forward facing tube exceeded the pressure in the side tubes. And this differential was transmitted to the equipment that translated into the speed measurement. In the electronic log, which also protrudes through the bottom of the ship, a water driven rotor turns a small electrical generator the current from which is proportional to the speed of the ship and I'll talk about that, that's the EM log and uh, this was, uh, the EM log was a slightly improved version of this log here. So let's talk about EM log but before that let me just discuss the legal requirements of carrying ship's logs. So all ships uh, carry normally a speed log and certain ships are required to be provided with one. So as per marine orders and solas, all ships uh, more than 300 gross tonnage must be fitted with a log that measures at the speed through water, that's STW. And all ships more than 50,000 gross tonnage must be fitted with a log that measures not only the forward and aft speed, but also the athwar ship speed and the speed over the ground. Alright, the types of logs, uh, now of course the ones that I showed you before, the towed log and the, uh, the old system of the log. It's all obsolete now. And the current logs that are used are the electromagnetic logs and the Doppler logs. So in this video, I'll talk only about the electromagnetic logs. And in the next video, I'll talk specifically about the Doppler logs. But I'll, I'll give you the links to those videos as well. All right. So logs are normally classified as stored logs or bottom logs. And those stored logs that I showed you before are now obsolete on merchant ships. All right. So it's the EM logs or the electromagnetic, electromagnetic logs that are uh, the most common ones found these days. Alright, so remember before we go into the details of the logs and their ways of measuring the speed, there is something fundamental which needs to be borne in mind and that is to be of value. The speed of an object must always be measured relative to some other point. So at sea, speed may be measured relative to either the seabed, which is speed over ground, or the water flowing past the hull, which is the speed through water. Now both of these steps have their place in the navigation. Now as per the collision regulations, the speed referenced must be speed through water. 
which is also used by the ARPA. All right, now this is an electromagnetic log. It's like a bottom log. That means the transducer uh, comes out of the bottom of the ship. So many equipment makers produce an EM log, such as Walker's Manor Log and Platt's Navy Knot 3 being the common examples. And the principle of operation is the same in every case. In some logs, uh, they are retractable, but in others, they are fixed. The transducer is fixed and generally using flush fitting sensors. This is based on the operating principle is based on the Faraday's laws of induction or the law of electromagnetic induction which states that the induced electromotive force in a closed loop is directly proportional to the time rate of change of magnetic flux through the loop. That means that if a magnet or a permanent magnet is near a conductor such as a metal wire, it will produce a voltage in that conductor. The resulting voltage is proportional to the speed of the movement. Moving the magnet twice as fast will produce twice the voltage. Now, if you if you didn't understand all that, it was it's a bit complicated for you. I'll show it to you through animations and what I mean in the context of uh, the speed logs. All right, so normally the EM log has uh, following units. You know, it consists of a C valve, hull fittings, and gland that you see. Then it has a retractable log tubed with hoist motor. The modern ones also have flush sensors, so there are no moving parts. And then they have a combined speed and distance repeater. The C valve assembly allows the log to protrude through the shell plating, yet maintaining the watertight integrity. The C valve and spindle and control wheel has an open and shut indicator on it. And there is also a warning light on the log tube lifting motor control box which indicates that the C valve is closed. Now you should never attempt to lower the tube with the C valve closed. The C valve should always be open and only then you should lower the tube. Now the electronic unit which measures the voltage produced and processes it to operate the speed readout and the speed output is also integrated with respect to time to provide standard output signals. The combined speed and distance recorder need no explanation and will probably contain on and off switch, reset control, dimmer control, speed readout, distance readout, so on and so forth. Alright, but let me show you uh, what is the operating principle of this. So the, this following figure shows that there is a cutaway of an EM log sensor maybe which is protruding through the hull or it's a flush sensor and you will see how the laws of induction or Faraday's laws of induction are used here for speed measurement. All right, so as stated this log operates on the principle of electromagnetic induction as used in electric generators. The rod meter sensor as you see is a streamlined flat ellipsoidal housing attached to the outer end of a strut projecting vertically from the bottom of the hull or housed in a flush arrangement which may look like an upturned soup bowl. A coil is mounted vertically inside the housing. An electric current through the coil produces a vertical magnetic field around the housing. And as the vessel moves through the water, movement of the magnetic field relative to the water produces some voltage in the water which is immediately now picked up by the electrodes. Hence the water adjacent to the sensor unit in the conductor and is moving through the magnetic field and consequently gets electrically charged. This voltage is linearly proportional to the speed of relative water flow and therefore a measure of the speed of the vessel through the water. The voltage generated, generated in the water is picked up by a pair of ship electrodes mounted on the outside of the housing and is transmitted to a suitable indicator within the vessel effectively by a voltmeter. The speed and distance thus measured may be further transmitted to various parts of the vessel as needed. If a second pair of electrodes is mounted in the longitudinal axis, lateral speed through the water can be measured. But accurate calibration of this athwashi speed is difficult and time consuming. As for the forward and off speed, a modern EM log is accurate to within about 0.1 of a knot. So if you see here, the EM log speed log works on the principle of measuring the flow of fluid past a sensor by the detection of electromagnetic induction. So the operation relies, relies upon the principle that any conductor which is moving across a magnetic field will have induced in its soul a small electromotive force. Alternatively, the EMF will also be induced or the electromotive force will also be induced if the conductor remains stationary and the magnetic field is moving with respect to it. Alright, so hope this, so if you can see here in the first diagram, the water is moving much slower than the second drawing and that's why the voltage produced will be different in both the cases but the voltage produced is proportional to the speed at which the water is flowing past the conductor. All right. Then the electromagnetic log has uh, certain advantages. 
And the first advantage is that it has a linear output throughout its operating range from about 0 to 40 knots, which is highly, it is highly sensitive. Uh, calibration stability required over a long period of time. So once it's calibrated, the stability is over a long period of time. And these logs are relatively free from fouling. That's why, because they are mostly these days, they are flushed with the hull. They are very so close to the hull that they don't get fouled. However, there are certain disadvantages. And the disadvantages is these uh, logs is expensive and it cannot measure speed over the ground. It can only measure speed through the water. So speed of the ground cannot be determined as was clear from the working that only speed through the water can be measured because it depends on the water flowing past it. All right, but still the electromagnetic log is widely used in naval vessels and increasingly used in merchant vessels as well. So this was a short lecture on electromagnetic log. I hope uh, you guys uh, understood the principle of the EM log and uh, uh, you understood and if you didn't understand something or there's something that you thought I skipped through, please feel free to write in the comment section. I'll see you soon with my next video. Bye for now.